Unposing the master class. This class is all about unposing. So unposing is basically uh, posing your couples, but without posing them. So let's begin. So a bit about why we do portraits. Firstly, they are the photos couples tend to share. Um, and we obviously love our couples sharing photos and they prefer portraits over documentary pictures. Also, parents often want these shots for the mantelpiece or to put up somewhere. Yeah, no one wants an angry mother of the bride coming to them once you've delivered photos asking where the photos are for her mantelpiece. It's also the one part of the day that we can actually control. So if we see a good light, we see a good background, we can actually make a photo using that light and background rather than being at the whim of, you know, where the guests are and what they're doing. So we can take some really great portfolio shots that we have complete creative control of. First of all, just do what works with your couple. So don't worry about trying to be different for every wedding. If you know a particular pose works, just rinse and repeat. Do the same thing for your couples. Like, they will love what they've seen on your portfolio and they'll want that for themselves. So don't think you have to be different for every single couple. And just remember, you don't have to be wildly creative every time. It can just be a safe shot. It could be just a nice photo of the couple. So first of all, remember to keep it natural. So you don't want to spend the wedding day going through your phone, trying to remember all the ideas that you had, looking at photos to copy. That's not going to be very fun for the couple. So do try to keep the whole shoot natural. Work with how they interact naturally. So try and take something that you see in real life with a couple and play on that rather than making them act in a way that's unnatural to them. Exactly. Sometimes it can really help to just watch the couple throughout the day. So if you see they hug in a certain way, they they just interact in a certain way, it's really nice to bring that. And you know that when portrait time comes, you can just say to them, you know, do your thing and you can compliment them on how great they are together naturally. And remember, the experience that they have is really important. So you want them to go away from the session feeling like they had a good time and with good memories of it. So that means don't be awkward, basically. <laughs> yeah, you don't want them going back and looking at the photos and being like, Ugh, look how awkward we are. We felt so awkward. You want them to feel good. And if it's a simple photo that makes them feel good, then that's better than, uh, you know, an impressive photo that made them feel weird. Yeah, bottom line is you want it to look like them. Exactly. Although it's not the bottom line in our slideshow. <laughs> the bottom line is... What they want as a couple versus what we want as photographers is a very different thing. So we look at other photographers, we look at award-winning photos, we think how creative can I be, how different can I be, and it makes us nervous for the photo shoot and things like that, and it's just, we're overthinking it a lot, whereas what they want is just a nice picture of themselves. They don't need something like crazy creative and off the wall, they just want a nice picture of them. So do stop overthinking it because if you try to think like a couple, think what you would want. Um, and what is that? It's probably just a nice snap of the two of you looking lovely. Stop overthinking it. <laughs> You've been told. So how we begin our portrait shoots. So I always say to my couples, first thing I say is my one rule is no hanging arms. Like you've got to do something with your hands all the time. And they love that because their first thing is, oh, I don't know what to do with my hands. And um, we've heard it from every single couple. I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, also, it fixes something compositionally because if an arm is hanging down like this, then it's going to lead you out of the frame. So actually it's nicer for it to be connecting the couple and then you have kind of a nice circle or a triangle here. Exactly. It just brings the whole thing together. If you don't have the connection between them, then you literally have a disconnect between the couple. So if, if one of their hands is hanging down, you can directly see that disconnect between them and it looks a bit off. Um, I also tell them not to look at me unless I say so. So I don't want them... I sometimes say that, you know, like in telly, there's the fourth wall. Don't look at the fourth wall. Um, don't look at the camera. And actually, all my couples love it when I say don't bother looking at the camera because firstly, they've been given instructions which they want. They want to know what they should be doing. And secondly, they don't want to look at the camera. <laughs> The first photo we take with our couples is always a safe shot. So it's literally stand there, hold hands or arms around each other and look at the camera. I do it in a portrait orientation. Um, it's just that framer that parents want, that they want. 
And sometimes if they're like, if they do a face like, oh, right, boring, I, I say to them, this will be the photo you will frame. I know it. I know you don't think it's like a great photo, but this will be the one that you'll pick and frame. Um, it's always the way. Everyone wants that safe shot. And then you're covered. If they say, if the bride says, you know, oh, you didn't get a photo of the full length of my dress or we don't have a nice picture of the two of us. You've got that safe shot. It's there. It's in the bag. And it takes literally one second, one click, <laughs> and you've got that safe shot in the bag. So whatever happens in the portrait session after you've got that shot, it doesn't matter because you've got that safe shot that they're going to love. Uh, one nice tip that we have is we'll just go for a walk with the couple. Um, and that has the advantage of making them feel more at ease. It feels less awkward than just standing around. And then we'll run ahead of them. So we get lots of walking towards the camera shots. Yeah, we'll have a look at um, different walking shots later. Um, but I love shooting these on an 85. So I have to run quite far ahead. Oh, couples always run so fast. They walk so fast. Always. They're like storming off or like slow down. Um, it makes them laugh if I tell them to slow down. Um, but yeah, run ahead. Stop, take the pictures. Run ahead again. Stop, take the pictures. Because those 85 long shot walking photos are just gorgeous especially like in a city or something like that you can blur out the background um, so they're really really great for portraits portraits don't have to be this romantic photo where they're looking at each other it can just be them walking through the streets so here are some examples of our rule number one no hanging arms as you can see the couple in the sea uh, he has his arms down by his side and they are only connected at the mouth, which just looks a bit weird. There's no connection there, really. There's no no emotion. There's no romance. As soon as he puts his hand on her waist, that's the only difference in the photo. Suddenly there's that connection. Suddenly it feels romantic. They feel like a real couple. With the other couple, you can see, again, the exact same thing. She's holding her flowers, so she's doing something with her hands. But his, his arm is all the way back, round here, just hanging down, drooping. And as Todd said, it says it drives you your eye out of the photo whereas as soon as he brings his arm in it just looks so much more romantic and connected yeah and this is a nice easy one to remember generally so just try and think every time you see a hanging arm tell them to do something with it i don't even mind a hand in a pocket like they can put a hand in a pocket at a, at a push but the hanging arm it just as soon as you see it you're going to look through your old photos and be like oh i see it now the hanging arms <laughs> and as soon as you like realize you're doing that it's the one thing you can easily quickly pick up and be like right i'm going to tell all my couples don't let your arms hang um and yeah sometimes they're like what what am i doing and just say to them you know whatever you do just put your arms on each other in some way whether it's on their shoulders their neck their waist their bum just say that to them just as long as you're touching each other in some way that's all i want and they pretty quickly get that so here are our safe shots just some examples of these they're literally standing there holding hands or arms around each other looking at the camera they're vertical um they're smiling well <laughs> the left hand couple aren't smiling because they realize they looked really cool if they did like the the stone cold look with the cool sunglasses <laughs> and we actually um kind of have to remind ourselves to do this shot at every wedding because uh, it's kind of so obvious that you almost overlook it but yeah it's a really important shot to have i think a full length shot of the couple um just kind of mantelpiece worthy i guess you'd say yep just looking at the camera might not be the most exciting one to do, but it's really important to have, I think, in the collection. Yeah, and like I say, it's probably the one they're going to use as a profile picture because it's got both their faces, they're both looking happy, they're both looking at the camera, and that's all really somebody wants from a photo, even if they don't realise it at the time. And here are some walking shots that we talked about. So, as I said, I love to go on an 85, I love to run ahead. Um, if you want a more sort of documentary look like we've got in the bottom left couple, then go for a sort of maybe 35 and stay closer to them. Um, it's got quite a different look, as you can see. And be aware that if they're walking around, they're probably naturally going to be chatting as well. So you probably will need to shoot more photos just to compensate for that one of them talking face. Yeah, that's so true. When I do walking photos, I take so many of them because I might get one good one. <laughs> yeah, and obviously in a in a town like Brighton here on the right, you're going to get a lot of stuff going on in the background that's out of your control too. So if you're doing walking shots, take a lot. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like I said, with the background stuff, an 85 will often blur that out. And also let them know what you want them to do. So do they look at each other? Do they chat? Do they look at you? Just say to them, you know, just just walk. I'll, I'll run ahead. You guys just walk and chat or walk and, and don't chat or whatever you want to do. Just kind of give them a little bit of very, very loose instruction. 
After you've got this safe shot and some walking photos and really easy ones, you want to get them connecting a little bit. So I literally just say to them, hug and kiss. And that's it. Like I might say to them, try not to chat too much because obviously like the talking face is really difficult to photograph. But I'll literally say hug and kiss. And if they're standing there hugging I'll, and I want them to kiss, I literally yell smooch. <laughs> and it's like the most ridiculous word. And makes them laugh and as you can see here they're just laughing they're being silly because i've yelled smooch at them um and sometimes i say something like hey you guys you're married you can kiss and stuff you can hug like it's okay to be close and touch now um and that also makes them laugh and smile so a lot of the stuff you do is about how you do it and not the stuff you say so if i said to them okay i'd like you to uh hug and kiss each other now i'd get a very different response to Hug and kiss each other, smooch, go for it, you're married, woo. And like, I'd get more of this reaction that you can see in this photo. So it's not just the instructions, but also the way you say it to them. Yeah, and don't panic and feel like you have to direct it. Because there's that moment where they'll be stood in front of you and they might initially look for direction. And you might be thinking, oh, I've got to tell them exactly what to do. But you don't. Just tell them to kind of act natural and make a joke about it. Yeah, exactly. Like if it's really not working, you say to them, oh, hug each other, hug tighter or kiss, kiss them more, or whatever, grab her, all that sort of thing. Just little, little cues you can give them rather than poses. Now, this one's a really good one for awkward couples. If they are like, we've had some awkward couples, haven't we, in front of the camera? Like they just don't know what to do with themselves. They don't know where to look and whatever you're doing isn't working. I then go to the alphabet game. So I don't, I don't use it that often, but if I have a really awkward couple, I will go to it. And all you have to say to them is describe each other using words beginning with each letter of the alphabet, taking it in turns to do a word each starting with A. Um, and I tell them they can be as romantic or as rude as they like. Obviously rude gets laughter, so that's always nice. I don't really get really romantic couples, as I said, so I'm not gonna get the sort of the tear or anything. And I don't play those sorts of games, those sort of things where you say, you know, look at each other and tell each other how much you love each other just through your eyes, that sort of thing. I, I don't, it's not in me to do that. And I think people who do it well really looks great, but I'm sort of going with the sort of messing about kind of route with things. So uh, yeah, I, I encourage them to be rude. Um, and importantly, I tell them to look at each other while they're thinking of words. So often they'll be like, oh, A, uh, hmm, and they'll look up and they'll look around. I'm like, that's not a good portrait. <laughs> look at each other and hold each other as they think of the words and as they say these things pose them first as well so tell them you know hug stand there and hold each other and say these words while looking at each other and just catch the reactions in between you'll get laughter you'll get like silliness you might get them hitting each other um it's just a really good fun way of helping them ease up a little bit and get those natural photos and it's also a really fun thing for them to do so they'll come away feeling like They've had a bit of fun, they've had a game together, um, and it's just become sort of part of the wedding that they've had this little fun game, basically. Yeah, so remember, um, the way you go about this is kind of an extension of your brand. So if being rude and silly is part of what you do, then that's how couples are going to want to be posed. Whereas if you go in for really romantic stuff, and that's what the copy on your website is like, and your brand, then figure out a way of digging deeper into that through the way that you pose your couples it's all kind of joined up yeah exactly so all of these tips i'm giving do work for all different types of types of couples um and as photographers we're the types of photographers not to like directly pose people like put your fingers here look exactly there we don't do that so our sort of direction gets the results without having to do that and it feels more like it's them um, and this is a really great way of sort of kicking that off One thing we love to do, if we are maybe running out of ideas or the couple keep on doing the same pose, um, we say practice your first dance. And if they haven't got a first dance, just say, you know, have a dance together. They always do the spin, <laughs> always, which works great as a, as a um, silhouette. Um, and just dancing photos just generally look really cool. They have a bit of fun. They have a laugh together. And often they'll end up in each other's arms giggling. So literally saying practice your first dance is the easiest thing you can do. Yeah, sometimes your aim is just to get people to loosen up. So when you feel awkward, you're going to be naturally just stiff and rigid in your body language. So if you can get them to essentially, you know, take their minds off it like this, then they're going to naturally loosen up as well. Yeah. And you know, all I can see here as we look at these photos is the hanging arm in that bottom photo. <laughs> this photo was years ago and that's annoying me now. <laughs> so this is the thing. You start looking at your old photos and you're like... <gasps> 
the hanging arm is all I see. Um, but yeah, put them in a position, get them in the composition that you want, in the light that you want, and just tell them to dance and just go for it. And I often move around them as well to see what kind of different things I can get too. So there's a lot you can get from this instruction. Holding hands, really, really underrated. Like it's the easiest thing to do, just say to them, hold hands and either look at each other, look away, look at you. But it's just like, it's like that safe shot. And that's something that every couple pretty much is going to do as well. It's going to be a rare couple that never holds hands. So yeah. this is, yeah, definitely a safe one in the sense that you're not going to ask anyone to do this and they're going to think that's not me. Yeah, exactly. So find a cool background and keep it simple, basically. Like these are ones that they'd probably frame because they're really, really beautiful photos that show off where they got married, that show off their outfits, that look nice, look comfortable, and they're just like literally the easiest thing you can do. So don't underestimate the holding hands pose. So another thing we like to do if we've got anywhere that they can sit down is I tell them to sit down and then I sort of direct them by saying sit like you're watching telly because um, either they will cuddle up or they'll make a joke like these two did. They said this is how we sit watching telly and they sat apart, legs akimbo, <laughs> leant back and it was really funny and by saying sit like you're watching telly it's obviously going to be very them because it's what they do. We're telling them to sit how they sit. Um, and then they'll cozy up. So if they're like looking really quite far apart, opposite ends of a sofa, or opposite ends of a bench, you can say, right, now can you both like cuddle up in the corner of the, of the sofa or something? Yeah, it's relatable, isn't it? Because it's something that every couple does sometimes. Um, whereas, you know, if you're not affectionate, then it's going to be very strange for you to stand there and be affectionate on command. Exactly, yeah. Sitting on the sofa or on a chair or on a bench together is like the most common thing for a couple to do. So it's very easy for them to sit there like they're watching telly and <laughs> feel comfortable and feel like them. Also with sitting down poses, just be creative around it. So sitting down isn't always that interesting. Like this couple at Angel Station are literally just sitting there separate in separate seats looking at the camera not doing anything special and i was creative around it by putting slow shutter speed onto these people to sort of frame them um, and with the other couple they were just um, on the hay bale having a hug so i walked around the hay bale got different angles on them and so all you have to do is tell them just to sit there and you will you know come up with a way of making it a bit more exciting so you could go high you could go low really close really far away with them just sitting there now the hair tuck. This is my secret weapon. <laughs> this is what I do if I want a romantic photo, but I don't really get romantic couples. I don't book romantic couples. Um, but sometimes a romantic photo is nice to have. And so I literally tell them to tuck their partner's hair behind their ear using the hand closest to you. You always need to specify that because they always use the other hand. Um, and if there is no hair to tuck, like if it's up or, or something, then just tell them to pretend there's hair to tuck. Um, as you can see, it just gets really intimate portraits and it doesn't feel posed and it doesn't feel super romantic for them. It just feels nice and natural. The almost kiss is another one of my secret weapons. So I tell them because they, you know, they're kissing the whole time, but then they do like the duck mouth when they kiss, like they, they pout their lips and it just looks terrible in a photo in like a freeze frame. Um, whereas if they don't pout, it looks really romantic. But you've only got a second before they actually kiss. So I tell them to not kiss. I tell them to go like they're going to kiss. Don't pout and hold it right before they're actually going to kiss. And I tell them that's the photo I want. And so it looks really intimate. But the best bit is that they actually always like kiss for real. And they kiss harder than they would if I just said kiss each other because they really want to. Because they're like, oh, we must resist. Oh, we can't resist. And you get a great kiss out of it. Um, or they laugh because they feel silly, which is another nice one as well. Um, so you get those sort of smiles. Um, so it just feels, it looks really, really natural and romantic. I've doubled up on this slide um, for you guys with the old flowers over the shoulder move um, because these photos illustrated it really well. Um, I just get the bride literally to drape her flower hand over her partner's shoulder because often they don't know what to do with that bouquet. And it looks really cool when it's kind of draped over the shoulder like that. Um, it adds a nice element to the photos. Yeah, make sure on that note that you actually bring the bouquet with you to the portraits because it's not unusual for it to just get dumped down somewhere. So we usually try and just, you know, make a note to bring it with us when we go out for the portraits. Yeah, sometimes I end up holding it and that's fine because they'll want photos without it as well. But not having it means you haven't got it at all. So if you at least bring it, you've got the opportunity to use it in a photo like this. The bear hug, the classic bear hug. Um, 
So this is a photo that is kind of hard to master, really. And I don't like telling people exactly what to do, exactly how to hold each other, exactly where to put your faces. So I use sort of slight hints for them. So I say to them, like, grab your partner from behind, just give them a big old bear hug, however you normally would. And then look at each other, but don't look at each other. Don't, don't like turn your head really far around awkwardly so all I can see is your neck to look at each other look towards each other so that you're in each other's peripheral vision and generally that gets this sort of a look um if I'm not feeling the vibe with them if it's not looking good I just say squeeze and I like shout I'm like squeeze each other and they're like oh and it gets you that extra bit of like love and a bit of fierceness from the photo um it's also worth like keeping an eye on where their hands are. You don't want a clump of like four hands coming together. So you can tell them to like, yeah, touch each other's arm or, you know, you can, they can put their hand on the other person's face or something like that. Um, but just, yeah, keep an eye on that hand clump. Yeah. And what we normally do once they're in this position, you know, move around a bit, get high and low. Um, you know, you can kind of leave them snuggling like this whilst you get about your business of finding a good angle on it. Exactly. And there's a lot of these lovely in-between moments as well with the bear hug because you tell them to squeeze, they start laughing. Um, as you can see in these photos, they're all a little bit different because they all respond differently to this, this pose. Um, so you can get lovely, lovely in-between moments for this. Doing portraits in full sun is really, really difficult. Um, so we try to make the most of it. So we will find a shaft of light or something like that, or we'll get them to look towards the light or face towards the light, I should say. Um, and we tell them they can close their eyes and they're like, oh, thank goodness for that. Because <laughs> um, it looks really romantic and nice when they've got their eyes closed. And it just looks really cool when the sun's just directly on their face. Um, it's a good one to get comfortable with that. Because I find that a lot of the time you do end up doing portraits at a suboptimal time of day where the light isn't great. So you want to get comfortable working in the sun. And um, yeah, it's just a great cheap thing to allow people to close their eyes. Yeah. And also to wear sunglasses, because quite often um, people have got trendy, nice sunglasses that they bring on their wedding day. So let them wear it. Yeah, exactly. Let them rock it. We, um, we love looking for a little shaft of light as well. This, this couple on the right here, that shaft of light was gone in the five minutes we took to do portraits there. Not even five minutes. <laughs> it was mad. We just about got it. Um, and what we said to them was, because they were standing in the shadowy bit. So I said, move until you feel the sun on your face. And that's easy to do. You can literally feel the warmth of the sun on your face. That's what I say to all my couples. Literally, when you when you feel the sun on your face, that's that's the spot I want you in. And then you can sort of pose them from there and um, and get them, you know, interacting with each other from there. Um, but we love a good sunny shoe, don't we? Trying all the angles is a really big one. Um, this has really helped having both of us photographing because we both bring a, a slightly different idea to when we do photos together we both have different ideas of what we want to do um todd's really good at getting low down and in all these photos the low down ones are his and honestly like they're pretty much my favorite ones <laughs> so it's worth while you're getting that lovely photo of them at face height then going lower down and trying you know from the floor or from above you know from really high up you know left and right through trees not through trees using leading lines all different things so when you've got them in that one pose just move your camera around and see what looks different because actually you'd be surprised at what looks loads better if you just shoot from a different angle yeah and what that will do is as you can see in these examples it kind of cleans up your pictures so you're going to lose all that messiness that you get at street height so sometimes you're going to want this stuff in there for context but uh, other times you just want to kind of hide it because you want to clean things up a bit. So that's why we do that. It also helps separate them as well. As you can see in the above photo, we've got nice separation between them and the buildings. And they're just, you know, they've just got the sky in the background. Um, whereas here it's quite a messy background and they're a little bit lost in that background. So the in-between moments after a pose are my favourite thing. So when they start laughing, when they move away from that pose, and as you can see, the, the wheat field couple are... He's, he's pulling her through the field and they're laughing. I think her boob fell out and that's why she was laughing. But don't stop shooting. The portrait session is not the portrait session. It's just a part of it. So when you're done, just keep your camera up and just keep on shooting because they're the good bits. Yeah, and I think the other key to this part is it is all about the banter at the end of the day. So don't stop chatting to the couple and make sure your whole process of booking weddings is one where 
you feel comfortable with a couple on the day and you want to chat to them because the more relaxed they feel and the more able to chat to them you are, the nicer the pictures like this are going to be. Yeah, we don't really do engagement shoots. We've done two. <laughs> so we don't feel the need to practice it with them beforehand because we've built that rapport. We're messaging our couples beforehand. They're seeing us on Instagram and stuff like that. So they feel comfortable with us already. So we can have that banter and we get to know their sense of humour as well. So we know what banter we can have. We know which couples we can swear in front of and which ones will respond well to that. We know which couples to, you know, just behave silly in front of because they'll respond to that. And so it's all about, yeah, that individual couple as well. Another great thing you can do during these portrait sessions is to lock your focus and just be in the moment. So rather than like, oh, focus, click, focus, click. If you could just hold down the focus lock button, or sometimes I just whack it into manual focus once I'm focused on them, I just then shoot away because I'm not worried about my focus point anymore. I can get that moment in an instant when it happens and just be in the moment a bit more. So we kind of talked about this a little bit already, but we love going low to isolate things. So a messy room, a busy scene, a dirty ground. So in this um, photo on the left, we had a lot of chairs all around the edge of the room. And so Todd got low down while I was chatting to them, as you can see, he got low down and he got the cool venue walls in and got rid of all the mess that was in the bottom. Likewise with the other one. And just bear in mind with this technique that you will get some distortion. So depending on, on how close to them you are and what lens you're on, they are going to look like they're pointing upwards, like two triangles. So just be aware of that and use that as part of your composition or stay a bit further back so it kind of compensates for that so you don't get triangular couples. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I love about this though is it, it sort of makes you stop because you see all these photos at eye, eye level that other people take. You see people at eye level. We're not used to seeing people from below or from above or something. And it makes you stop and look at that photo for a second longer, which will make your work stand out, which will make your couple think, hey, I like this. I don't know why, but it's different. I like it. Um, and going low is just like the easiest thing you can do. You're doing your portraits. You think, OK, I'll go low for this one. And boom, you've got a whole different photo. Um, so, yeah, if you're finding you've got like a messy scene, which happens all the time, going low really fixes that. We love a silhouette when it gets to night time as well, um, but posing for silhouette photos is slightly different. You need to make sure there's a gap between them, otherwise they're just a lump of dark. Um, asking them to dance is a really great way of having gaps and having shape. You want shape in these silhouettes. So doing a dance really helps with that. Um, and just saying to them, like, stand a little bit far apart, but look at each other, but you know, they can kiss, but don't hug too tight or anything. Um, so yeah, silhouettes are kind of a different beast. Yeah, with a silhouette, it is easy for things to look lumpy. So actually, even here on the right, we've got something that's... It's a person. <laughs> guessing, yeah, intersecting. And I think we actually got an, a funny shot on the day that was an alternate of this, where it kind of looked like the person was kneeling down in front of him <laughs> in did. a slightly suggestive way. And I think we delivered that as well. Because <laughs> we um, the groom had that kind of sense of humour that he thought it was great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just bear in mind, you know, the background, the foreground, everything is going to kind of merge into one when you're doing silhouettes. So try and keep things simple. Yeah, that's why going low again is really good for this sort of thing. Because if we'd gone higher, they would have been, that person in the background would have been fully visible. Because um, it was a busy wedding venue, people were still hanging around. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, we, we don't do silhouettes too often, but they're a really great thing to pull out if you want to do something a little bit different. Let's talk about unusual pairings of couples. So this is something that comes up a lot where people say, oh, what if one person's shorter than the other or something like that? Um, so here's a few little um, tricks you can pull out your tool bag. So if one person is shorter than the other, piggybacks are a great thing to do. Um, holding hands is nice. The bear hug's good because the taller person can be just like bending down a bit and bear hugging them from behind. Um, a kiss on the head or something like that. If they're standing there, one can kiss the other on the head. Um, or stand on steps like this couple below. If one person is in a wheelchair as well, that can be tricky because you've got a very big height difference then. So you could sit the other person down. You could put their hand on the person in the wheelchair's shoulder. Or again, you can do that bear hug with them sitting down and lean in from behind and that can look really romantic too. Also, if you've got two men or two women, people often ask this question, how do I pose them? And it's literally the same. There is nothing different at all. There are a couple who are romantic and... That, that is all there is to it. Just be aware of your language. So don't say sort of masculine or feminine things to them that they, you know, that wouldn't be appropriate for them. Uh, but yeah, treat it exactly the same. There is literally no difference whatsoever. 
So fixing awkwardness. This is kind of like a little troubleshooting guide for you guys. Um, so these are things that we come across quite a lot. Firstly, let's talk about drunk couples. So if you left the portraits a little bit too late and they're a bit drunk, or if they are already drunk straight after the ceremony, <laughs> we've seen both of those instances. Well, first of all, try not to do that. So we do try and manage our weddings so that if we think it looks like a wedding where they're going to get drunk, we will really try and get the portraits done earlier or at least get some safe shots done so they're in the bag so it's less stressful later on. Exactly. We'll always say to them that we'll get one quick shot like straight after the ceremony of just the two of them like, oh, like their friends do. Their friends are like, well, stand there and get a photo. So I'm like, okay, great. Yeah, stand there, get a photo. Click. I've got my safe shot. So if they're really drunk later, at least I've got one portrait. So yes, for drunk couples, walking and holding hands is a good one because I find when you try to be too romantic, their heads start lolling and their eyes get droopy. But if they're walking and holding hands, it's pretty simple. That should look okay. Doing the dance again, make them do their dance because that could be quite fun. Um, give them something to do. So give them a bit more direction as well. And also just shoot a lot because you're going to get a lot of sort of half blinks. You'll get some head movement um, and some leaning. So just keep on shooting until you get that photo where they don't look quite so drunk anymore. <laughs> um, just give yourself a lot of photos to choose from when you're culling. It's also a nice idea just to let them muck about. So this couple on the hay bale were absolutely wasted by this point. It was a sunset um, shot. It was a sunset moment. And obviously we'd done our portraits earlier. And I thought, oh, let's go out and get some nice sunset photos. And they were <laughs> so drunk. And they just like messed about on a hay bale. And I love these photos because they're just silly. So I just let them get on with it. Um, another one could be a silhouette. So you don't have to worry about the blinking and anything like that. Sometimes you get couples who kind of default to being silly and a bit cheesy. Like they'll go into a cheesy pose, if, even if you haven't told them to. And you're like, oh, okay, uh, now let's move on to the next thing. <laughs> so basically all I do is I take the shot of them being cheesy and then I'm like, okay, like now let's do something else. But I get that shot of them going in between. So as you can see on the far right, the top photo is of them being silly. They were being like rabbits in a field. Because I said go into this lovely... So go in the lovely wildflower meadow. I wanted to get a beautiful romantic photo of them in this wildflower meadow. And they just pretended to be bunnies the whole time. No matter what I said to them, they ignored me and just did this bunny thing. Um, and then I said, okay, guys, come out of the meadow now. And I got this lovely shot where she picked up her dress, walked towards him. He's looking back at her. And that is a really beautiful shot for me. I love that. Um, so just, yeah, let them get on with it and then just get that sort of leaving the photo moment instead. Also, we often get couples that kind of default to the same pose, like their own comfortable pose. Um, this couple in the top left, they kept doing this same pose where he rested her he his head on hers, which looked really lovely, but then he did it for every single photo. And I thought, oh, I'm getting the same photo with every background. Um, so get them walking. So I got a lot of walking shots of these, these two, which were really beautiful. Um, and try the, the specific tips, such as the hair tuck and the almost kiss. So that forces them to do something a little bit different. Some more fixing awkwardness, troubleshooting, if they look forced and awkward in a pose. So that happens a lot where you're like, oh, this just doesn't look, this just looks awkward. So if it does, just stop forcing it. Like, don't worry about it. Tell them to do what's comfortable. If they're like not comfortable with what you're doing, just say, oh, guys, shake it off. Like, do it again or do what's comfortable with you guys. Like, tell them not to overthink the pose too much because couples can be like, oh, where, did, where exactly did you want my hand? I'm like, don't overthink it. Just, just hug how you'd normally hug um and that helps a lot you can also get them to talk about their favorite part of the day so far or something like that um just to get them to ease up a little bit just to relax and get them onto some sort of common ground where they can talk about something talk about the day um and they can relax a bit and then you can get a photo of them in between talking so sometimes if my couple are chatting away they'll be like i won't be like oh can you guys like not talk for a bit i'll just say shut up shut up you guys stop talking <laughs> and they laugh and actually that's the kind of that's a photo that i want as well where they laugh like that yeah i think sometimes it's about just making ourselves feel at ease too and if we're feeling chilled as the photographer it's going to rub off isn't it yeah that's it like there's there's been so many opportunities this year that we've had where we've thought we've looked back at the photos afterwards and thought oh we kind of missed an opportunity to get a really great portrait there we had such a good background if we had just stayed a minute or two longer taken a moment to think then we would have got something really epic and we didn't. And we said to ourselves from that moment on, we were like, let's just take that moment. Like, they're fine hugging and kissing. If we take a moment to take it in, think, 
<laughs> about what we want to do rather than going oh never mind then come on let's go back to the party just take that moment say to them you know you guys enjoy kissing and hugging i'm just gonna you know work around you i'll be quiet for a bit you guys can do what you want and yeah take that moment give yourself that moment because you'll thank yourself when it comes to culling and you'll be like yes i really nailed that photo i really got what i wanted so don't worry they're not going to mind if it takes a minute or two longer if they get a really great photo out of it Here's a quick cheat sheet for you guys. So if you have awkward couples, you can try walking the alphabet game, holding hands, hugging and kissing, telling them not to let their arms hang, sitting next to each other and the first dance. So all of these things work really well for awkward couples. There's loads of go-to moves for you here. And for your romantic portraits, try hair tucking, almost kissing and getting them to dance. Yeah, those photos look really romantic without much effort for them. It doesn't feel cheesy. And for silly portraits as well. So if you've got a silly couple, you could do a piggyback. You could tell them to do a really tight bear hug and just tell them to do their thing. Like this couple here, I was doing this lovely romantic photo and they both whispered something to each other. I was like, what are they saying? And they turned to me and went, Ur. it's some sort of like, maybe like a cult reference that I didn't get because they did it a few times. Um, and I love this photo because it's very them. So just tell them to do their thing and make sure you have your camera up and ready to capture it. So that is basically how we do portraits. We don't pose, we give them little hints. Um, I like to call it unposing, it's very natural. And as long as they have a good time and they get nice photos out of it, that's all that matters.